Hello good people from the internet. Today I want to talk to you about how to make a VS Code extension. And I can bury in the clothes of a wizard because that's what I am. Okay, how to make a VS Code extension and not die trying uh, by me. So recently I've been building this extension called Learn Vim. And I've gone through the process of finding out what you need to do in order to make an extension. So I thought it would be a great idea to just give you a quick summary of what I've learned. So if you're thinking about building an extension, you can do it in no time. At least like remove all the at least remove all the worries and doubts uh, that you may have about the process of creating an extension and pushing you and showing you how easy it is, how simple it is to get started. So you can just go and do it. So um, this is what you will learn in this mini talk or lightning talk. How to get started, the anatomy of an extension, how to publish your extension, and uh, the VS Code Marketplace. I'm going to show you a little bit behind the scenes of how the VS Code Marketplace looks like. So how to get started. The best way to get started building your first extension for VS Code is to go to the documentation. There's this get started guide. And uh, here it is your first extension that's is broken down in like three different topics. Uh, your first extension, uh, the extension, uh, the anatomy of an extension and wrapping up. It's a super simple way to get started. But let me show you uh, how the process looks like in uh, life. The first thing that you need to do is to get installed uh, using PM uh, to install those two packages, Joe and Generator Code. If you're not aware about Joe, Joe is a tool that lets you uh, scaffold different types of apps. So you can uh, define your own template for a project. In this case, it would be a VS Code extension. And you can use Joe to generate uh, the skeleton of an extension for you. And this is what's going on here with this uh, VS Code extensions and this generator code that you see right here. So if we want to create our new extension, we can say Joe code. And now you can see that we get sort of a wizard that is asking uh, different questions that we need to answer in order to create uh, the extension. Uh, there's like different options. So if you want to create a color theme, you could go and select these options. Language support, if you want to add something to a language, code snippets, key maps, and then you have like a couple of extensions that are like um, any type of extension for TypeScript and JavaScript. It's like the first one, we go say like TypeScript, we say my extension. My awesome extension. Say enter uh, some cool exception uh, extension, and then we're gonna initialize a git repo. I want to use npm. This is gonna scaffold that project for me. It's gonna scaffold my extension. It's gonna install all the dependencies uh, through npm. And now it's giving me uh, some uh, direction as to how to continue. Uh, and it says just go into the folder. Uh, the full that you have just created, and open code. You can see that it opens, uh, I just opened code in that folder. There's an update, it should update soon. Uh, but what is the interesting thing here? Uh, the interesting part here is that now that we are in this extension that is open in VS Code, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to run it and see how it behaves. Uh, so we run it, uh, the uh, nice way to do it is to open uh, the command palette and say just uh, start debugging. And now it's going to open a new instance of VS Code, but it's going to be running our uh, extension. So now we can run it and it's a very simple extension. You just add a single command. It's called, it's called hello world. When we use this command, we're going to see that it says here, hello world for my awesome extension. Uh, how do you difference between your uh, the back version of this code and the other version of this code, you can see how uh, this one is running in debug mode, and this one is just a normal instance. So if we uh, close this for now, let's go and take a look at how the code for this extension looks like. Uh, this is a very simple uh, extension that has the following elements: uh, interesting point, package.json. This is like the manifest of your extension. And here you can see that it has this special uh, element that it's not common in packages JSON, uh, and it's special for VS Code extensions. And here it's saying, okay, I'm contributing to your VS Code uh, with a command 
the name of the command is this one, is like an ID, uh, to uniquely represent uh, your command within VS Code. And this is the title, this is what shows in in the command when you when you, when you open the command palette. Uh, so this basically tells VS Code that whenever I install this extension, I'm gonna have these new things that are in, uh, in VS Code. And then we have also this uh, extension, okay, we go here to source, so you can see it clearly. Here the source this is the source code of the extension. Here is extension.ts, this is the entry point of your extension. And here you can see it's uh, um, not loud. Uh, this is a very uh, highly commented file with lots of information of how this works. Uh, so what happens is that your extension is going to be activated. This again is defined in your package situation. So here you can see also that uh, in addition to the contributors, you also have this activation event. So this tells uh, VS Code how and when to activate uh, our extension. In this case, we're saying, okay, whenever you execute on command, whenever you execute this command that we have you find here, we're going to activate that extension. And it is what tells VS Code that whenever this happens, it's going to uh, activate our extension by calling this method here. So I call this method and then we're gonna uh, initialize uh, the extension by doing some console log. We can see how uh, here below we can see congratulations your extension my awesome is active. This was logged when we executed uh, the extension from the debug version. Very helpful for debugging. And then uh, what do we do when we activate our extension? We are actually registering a command so that this method gets called whenever the command is executed. So basically we have an event handler for that command. And in this case, we're using the VS Code API to just show a simple message. It says, hello world from my awesome extension. So let's see how this plays out. So we do uh, start debugging and now we execute the command here. You're gonna see how this thing appears below, we would expect. And also we see how this gets uploaded in the console. So let's see if we want to change this. So they want to say, hello, Jamie, it's me. Ooh, blah, blah, blah. And now we're going to change also these to say, hello, go, hello, whoa, Jamie's house. Change those things. Now if we go to the other version of his code. I will refresh the extension with command R or control R. Wonder if I say uh, R. I don't know if it's a command available for this. Do command R and then you uh, refresh uh, VS Code, the, the packing version, and now if we, if we run Hello World, we see that there is this new message. Uh, if we go back to, to this other, we can see that we also have updated this message as well. Cool. So that's how a very simple um, VS Code extension works. Uh, we saw how you can generate it with uh, the Joe scaffolding tool. Uh, we saw how you can go through those um, that wizard, selecting different options. So you can create a new extension of different types. We opened it. We saw how you can run it in the back mode. So you can um, run it and see how it works as you're developing it. We saw uh, how uh, simple extension is uh, structured with a package.json with some um, contribution points and activation events. Uh, we saw the entry point. We saw the entry point of an extension with uh, how it gets activated and how you can register an event handler. And we saw how we update the some strings to see uh, those things take effect. Now let's uh, go back to the presentations there. Who are you? So now what we learn, let's just, uh, let's uh, rewind and, and see if we can build a better mental model of how it is to develop an extension or the anatomy of an extension. So first we have that manifest that you saw that the package uh, the package the JSON file is like a set of declaration of how your section behaves in VS Code, how your extension uh, enhances VS Code in different ways. Then we have the extension entry point that's at to, that extension .ts that you saw that's where. Uh, your application gets activated and it registers different event handlers to, to handle commands or other elements of your uh, VS Code extension, like UI elements, like a panel or, or things like that. And then finally you have your section code, uh, 
um, and you have a lot of freedom of how to structure your standard code if you, if you want to bundle it, if you want to optimize it in any way. Uh, and this code is going to be the one that is going to be exercising the VS Code API in different ways to achieve something useful for the user. Uh, the manifest has two things that is very interesting, and those are activation events and contribution points. Activation events tell VS Code how and when to activate your extension. In the extension that we saw, uh, we activated the extension by a command. So the, 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 the moment, unless you use a command, the extension lies dormant, but the moment that you execute the command, we activate the extension, register the event handlers, and, and manage those commands. And then we have contribution points, that uh, this is uh, another declarative section on your package.json that tells VS Code how your extension enriches VS Code with uh, functionalities, uh, menus, commands, side panels, uh, etc. There are many activation events. This is uh, from the documentation. Uh, we only use on command, we also on command on uh, that particular example, but there are many uh, different ones. You can take a look here if, if you want to activate your event on different things. And likewise, there's a lot of different contribution points, uh, different ways in, in which you can enhance VS Code. These are available in the documentation that is super useful, in this case, in references. Uh, there, is, there are many different ways in which you can customize VS Code, uh, and all of them are available in the documentation. So you go to the documentation, there is uh, lots of uh, information about how you can do, how you can write extensions and extend VS Code. There is a bunch of extension guides that uh, provide examples of different APIs in more detail, like for instance, tree view, or how to use the web view to show some UI. Uh, there is another separate section uh, devoted to, to language extensions that uh, are a little bit different, they're more complicated uh, than normal extensions, so here we have a, a lot of additional uh, help and documentation to how to enhance this code with uh, these type of the extensions. And then finally, very useful, there is a ton of extension samples that show you how to use different APIs uh, with actual code. So you go to bit.ly VS Code extension samples, or just search VS Code Essential Samples uh, on your favorite search engine, and you will be uh, sent here. And here you can find, yes, you can just clone any of these examples or just yes, produce them to learn about how to use some of these APIs. Let's take a look at an extension that is a little bit more involved than the Hello World, and this is the Learn Beam session that I've been working on. Uh, let's start by actually executing it. Uh, let's start by executing it so you don't know how it works. So here we're running in debug mode, it's going to like start a new debug version. We can see that it's already added something here, it was new, this is the learn beam side panel. But normally the way that we, you, treat, you will treat it by using this learn beam command that is here. Uh, and now it's going to open the learn beam experience where you have a side panel with a bunch of uh, chapters that you're going to use to learn different things within beam. Here we have a uh, web view where we're showing a website with some uh, content uh, you need to read in order to learn how to use Veeam. And then here in the third part we're showing uh, exercises. In this case it's just an introduction, that there's not much to exercise about, but then when we get to things like motions we're opening uh, a bunch of exercises. So the reader uh, can experiment and learn Veeam uh, by practicing. As uh, the user goes selecting these things, it's going to ma mark them as uh, visited or read. Uh, and right now we don't have a way to unmark that, so that's why all of them are marked already. But that's how it, it works. So we're recording the state of progress by using an API in this code. Uh, so this is how it is. It's the tree view with uh, some chapters and some state for those chapters, read or unread, a web view, with some content, and then there's files with exercises. So let's close this and let's see how this is implemented. So here you can see that now we have a full activation event, we have on command, so whenever you execute the command learn beam, we activate the extension, or when we open that side panel uh, in the activity bar, we also gonna activate the extension. And then we have a bunch of contributes because this extension contributes to VS Code with uh, more things, a couple of commands, the learn beam and the open chapter command 
uh, drum build that you saw, open chapter you didn't see. And the reason for that is that it's not available in the command palette. This is a command that is only used internally by the extension. It's here we are saying that uh, when do we show it in the command palette? Uh, never false. We have a couple of um, view items here, which are uh, the two. One of them is uh, the web view, I think, and the other one is the activity bar. Uh, and that's what shows in the left with the tree view. So, so yeah, this is how we this extension enhances this code. And now let's take a look at the source code. Blah, 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 here. This is the interesting part, the extension. Uh, whenever we activate the extension, what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, read the last state, so the progress of the, of the user, how much they have advanced in the course, and then we're going to create a tree data provider, a tree view. So this basically is going to show that uh, tree view within the side panel with all the chapters. And then we have a web view that we're gonna open. Uh, whenever we uh, run this command learn Vim, you remember how it opened everything. So here it's gonna create that read view, it's gonna load the content, uh, it's gonna open the exercise that is the other panel with the exercise to the right. But that's uh, pretty much how it is. Um, yeah, so you get an idea of how it is to build an extension. Now let's go back here and finish the presentation with a couple more, more points. How do we publish an extension and how do we interact with the marketplace? So in order to publish, uh, it's very smooth. You just use uh, a package from NPM called VSCE, and say VSCL Studio Code Extensions. And you're gonna run these two commands, VSCE package and VSCE publish, and that will allow you to publish your package uh, your extension in uh, the VS Code marketplace. Um, you have a full guide for this here in the docs. And uh, one thing that is interesting is that before you can publish, you need to register yourself as a publisher. There's a couple of ways to do uh, a couple of ways to do that. You can find that information in the this guide. I think you can also use the VSC com uh, command to, to also register as a publisher. Um, once, once you've done that, uh, you can upload your extension to Marketplace here where all the, where all the extensions are. And uh, let me show you how it looks for a publisher. So here I'm going to load my internal view of the, of the Marketplace. And here you can see my extension. Uh, here you can also update the extension and see latest version, there's ratings. Uh, you can click here in Learn Vim, and here you can see how your extension has been down downloaded, how many times over time. You can look at ratings and review, and you can answer uh, as well. You can say edit, or you can say yeah, you can answer. I have already answered this one, so I guess I, know I can't do it anymore. And then here, if there's questions or answers from your users, you can also find them here. And that's it. The moment that you upload your extension to marketplace it appears there so here we have learn pin and there it is awesome and now we're done hope you've learned uh, a lot uh, if you have any doubts about writing an extension and i hope that they have been dispelled and that you're ready to go you need to you'll need to install uh, joe on the code generator and you're ready to get started um so the world is your oyster Go make some extensions. Goodbye.